introduce you to my latest toy. It's coming on October the 1st, it's the PSP Go, and it's Sony's latest iteration of its handheld console. Off the bat, it's 43% lighter and 56% smaller uh, in terms of stats than the original PSP 1000. Now, what does that mean in real terms? Well, just so happens that I have the original uh, clunky PSP Brick 1000 in my hand here. And as you can see, there is a massive difference in terms of size, both frontways on, uh, both in terms of the, the thickness of the console. If you put them together and you put them on top of each other, clearly there's a huge difference in size there. And that is how it looks when it's all closed up. You get a nice little clock on there when it's in standby mode. Fiddle around with the L and R buttons and it does some weird wave-like pattern. Click both L and R together and a calendar comes up and you can flick through the uh, months just using the L and R buttons. But obviously, to use PlayStation Portable Go properly, you flip. And that is where the buttons are revealed and that is how the vast majority of your time using this machine will be spent. And it's quite a sturdy mechanism, you can kind of flip it open and it feels perfectly solid. Uh, I've been doing this lots and I've not broken it yet and hopefully I won't break it while I'm doing it now. And when you boot it up, the cross-media bar is very much what you will recognize from regular PSP use. Differences are the D-pad here, and the, the positioning of the buttons. The D-pad is a lot flatter. And in fact, all of the buttons are much, much flatter simply so they can fit underneath the screen. It's an unusual feel at first if you're used to playing PSP. It takes a little while to get used to, particularly the biggest change that everyone's talking about is the repositioning of the analog nub, which is now almost in the center of the unit. But other than that, the controls on the front, your D-pad, your analog nub, start and select, and your regular PlayStation buttons. On top you have the shoulder buttons, you have the screen brightness button and you have the volume controls. Underneath you have the headphone socket and you have the USB slot. Now the console comes with a proprietary uh, USB design which actually doubles up as the uh, power cable as well. So you plug the device, plug the lead into there, you plug the other end of the USB connector into the plug and that goes straight into the socket. And the USB slot obviously is, is quite important in this case because the main change, of course, with PSP Go, aside from the design, is the removal of the UMD drive. And that, again, is another major reason why they've been able to cut the console down in size so much. Because, of course, in previous models, you had that. But now, this, thanks to PSP Go, is a thing of the past. So, of course, the console now connects directly via the menu system to the PlayStation Store, and from there you can download any games and trailers and other items straight onto the console itself. It comes with built-in 16 gigabyte storage flash memory. You can expand that um, up to 32 gig via an M2 card that goes in the slot on the side. You can transfer files across via PC uh, or via your PlayStation 3 as well. At the moment, obviously, that there aren't games that have been specifically designed with PSP Go in mind. This is one of the games that does actually work at the moment. Of course, you simply, most of the time, just rotating left and right, and you, you can jump by pressing both of the buttons and releasing. So that game works absolutely fine. Unfortunately, where things come unstuck is when you get to parts like that in the game, where you re are required to use the button, and then you have to flip it open quickly, but you can go back. But obviously, more broadly, the potential here is for game designers to kind of think about how they could make a PSP Go game specifically that you can play just using the L and R buttons. And you've already seen how big it is compared to a, a PSP uh, 1000, the original PSP. Now, interestingly, PSP Go is even smaller than a Nintendo DSi, and you can see there in terms of thickness how it compares. And finally, we have uh, James the Cameraman's iPhone. I don't own an iPhone, I've got a really annoying Nokia, but we won't labor that point. The iPhone is slightly smaller, but you can see that there's not a huge amount of difference. Now the other thing to point out with PSP Go is it's smaller in size and it's also got a smaller screen. You're now looking at a 3.8 inch screen compared to the 4.3 inch screen of the previous models of PSP. And here it is uh, playing a video, ironically playing a trailer for the PSP 3000 which is soon to be rendered obsolete by this little thing. And again, you can just use the shoulder buttons in the closed position to skip through content. While most of the basic features are identical to previous PSP models, one new addition um, is Bluetooth. 
connectivity, which means you can hook it up to a wireless headset, for instance, or you can tether it to a Bluetooth-enabled mobile phone. And interestingly, you can also use then a DualShock or a 6-axis to use those via Bluetooth to play games uh, on the PSP Go. So there we are, that concludes our very brief walkthrough tour of PSP Go and its features. And you can read more detailed impressions of what we thought of it by hitting the red button. PSP Go is out on October the 1st.